yogis. We're here again at Anlak Mission, the Buddhist Study Center in Ventura, California. And this morning, we're still under lockdown uh, because of the virus. So we bring a little offering of lower back pain type yoga. Um, and it also helps all, all uh, your back, but mostly it's gonna be a focus on your lower back. A lot of people have been saying to me, oh, my back is so sore. I think it's because I'm worried or I'm sitting on the couch too much. So hopefully this will help. Please practice with us. So just relaxing your hands, palms turned up. Softly close your eyes. And turn your eyes towards your heart. Relax your heart as though you could gaze down and into your own emotions. Spend a moment there and ask yourself, how do I feel this morning? How do I really feel? And wait for the answer. And then very slowly open your eyes. Look down at your hands and think about any work you've done since you've last done your yoga and offer that work up. Clasping the fingers together, we turn the palms up into the sky, opening the armpit chest area. So the armpit chest area is this area, anything that's in here. And it's closed most of the time, so it gives us a great feeling of freedom to open the armpit chest area. It makes us happy. Squeezing the fingers together. Stretch the arms, bring the upper arms back down into the shoulders, but press the palms up against the ceiling. And then release, open out. Now, as you come out, come out and down. Stretch out and down. Feel the air. And then as soon as you touch the floor, come all the way back up. We're going to take a different finger first. And then press that ceiling back up there again. And drop your head back, all the way back. Look up at the ceiling. And make a big yawn and stick your tongue out as long as you can. And then relax your tongue, relax your face, and slowly take your head back to neutral. Squeeze the fingers once, and then release, and open out, and open down, and just touch the floor. Sit up nice and tall, taking the right hand to the left leg, left hand behind, lift and let the eyes settle on just one spot and let the eyes be friendly towards that spot. Soft eyes, kind eyes, gentle eyes. And then release. We'll come back for an inhale. Fill yourself up as though you're inhaling through the fingertips. And then on the exhale, switch left hand over and right hand behind. We're staying tall. We're making spaces between the vertebrae and then turn into those spaces. Lift and twist and turn. And release, good, releasing the legs now. We'll straighten our legs out in front and take a moment to press the back of the legs down. Fingertips by your hips, lift up nice and tall. Good, and then feel your head straight up into the sky. Crown of the head reaching up, as though somebody was trying to pick you up from the crown of your head. Stretch out into your feet, and then see if you can get the heel of the hand down on the ground. Good, activate and energize the body. Now, while you're sitting like this, try to notice if your lower back is tired or sore or wanting to round like this. If you feel like that sitting like this, then this is the class for you. Let's release, relax. 
We're going to go over to the wall and we're going to bring our mats to the wall. So bring your sticky mat to the wall. So you're going to get too close so that your knees are kind of bent. You want to get this. And then you're going to hold on to the mat and as you push your heels in, you're going to move your whole body out along the mat. This is going to make your bottom turn into a pancake. Okay, you've got to flatten your bottom out. You're going to lengthen the lower back. And if you feel that, then you're doing it right. And then take your thumbs, hook your thumbs over your head. You want to feel the traction. Your legs feel like they're glued to the ground. Good. So no, no relaxed legs. The legs are pressing down. Thumbs are stretching out. And then switch the cross of the thumbs after a few moments, lengthening the whole side of the body, the whole back of the body. And then start to bring the stretch into the front of the body. That feels good, doesn't it, Suthadara? <laughs> and then relax the arms. Good, but not the legs. Now we're just going to take that right leg into our chest this right knee, flex the right foot, but you're going to stand into that left foot, pulling the right knee in, and push the left heel into the wall. This is creating traction in the lower back, and that's opening spaces and places where you might be trapped, or hidden, or gripping. Let's release our right side and do the left, just pull the left knee in and check in with that foot on the wall. Feel as though you're standing on the wall. Push the heel in and then pull that right knee close to you. Big deep breaths. Each time you notice, okay, I've moved into the pose. Now I'm going to take those long deep breaths. Let the body really enjoy that pose. And release. Good. Now, notice your back is releasing, so you might have moved away from the wall. Scoot in a wee bit, get the bent knees, hold on to the side of the mat, and push the heels in, create your traction again. If you have low back pain at all, you want to try this. Then we're going to get our belt. I'm going to do the right leg. If I'm facing the camera, then I'm going to be doing the opposite. For you now home, we're going to take the right foot in here into the belt and just straighten it up. Now, give yourself enough belt so that the back part of your shoulders come back to the floor. You don't want to be hunched up like this. You want to be relaxed down and into the palms. Giving yourself a nice, long, deep hamstring stretch. So this leg is working, but make sure that this one is working too. Pressing down into the floor, you're standing into the wall. Stretch that inner heel. Make the inner legs, both of the inner legs, long. Pull down with your hands. Nice trick here is to turn the inner elbows towards your face. Kind of helps you to feel like your hands are weights. Oh, so nice. Good. And then we're going to release. And switch. Check to see. You have a little traction. You have that right leg now is pushing down into the floor. Left foot is up into the sky. And you don't want to stress and strain here. You want to get good alignment. The heel directly over the hip. The backs of the shoulders coming back to the floor. Straight elbows maybe. Inner elbows towards your face. Now check in with your right heel, press it into the wall, press the back of the right knee down. Good. So you could stay like this for as long as you want to. You could just keep doing this one over and over and see if that relieves your back pain. Let's move on. We're going to release that foot. We're going back to the right foot. Put your right heel in the belt. Take the foot up. 
straight leg there. Check in, is that left leg glued to the floor? Then you're gonna bend your elbows out slightly, pull the right foot a tiny bit closer to your face and then reach up, hold close to your foot. And on an exhale, you're gonna take that right leg out to the right. Now you might be able to get it to that uh, block. It might be nice feeling to rest the foot on the block, but just have to. If it's high, that's fine. But more important is to keep this hip down. Keep the opposite hip on the floor. Keep standing into the wall. You could press down now with the left hand on the left hip, or take the left hand out to the side. So remember, it's always nice when you're going to do your yoga practice to start with something like this. We're going to inhale, take that leg back up. Now we're going to switch sides. You might take your block and bring it over to the other side. Keep it up nice and tall. We're going to switch hands, hold your belt with your left hand and roll all the way over. The foot of the wall, that little toe is going to come down and touch the ground. And you're going to see if you can get that right foot onto the block on the outside. Drop your right hand out to your right. And then push your feet out. Stretch into your heels. See if you can stand back into the wall with that left foot. Good. And to come out of this one, it's nice to bend the right knee first and then roll back. Good. So that kind of a twist, we don't stay in very long. You would stay longer in the other two than that one. So let's see if we can get that on the other side. So set up your block. You could have a pillow, you could have a chair, especially if you're not very flexible yet. Every now and then, check, make sure that you have um, that back traction. So another idea, say if you didn't have a block at all, these blocks are not expensive, but what if you had something like this, a nice box like this? So let's pretend you don't have a box. Good. Perfect size. So you're going to take that left foot into the belt. Left, left, left. Yeah. Now left heel is up into the sky, straight left knee. The right foot standing on the wall. The lower back is tractioned. Bend the elbows out to the side. Pull the foot a little closer to you. And then hold your belt just with your left hand. And on an exhale, he's going to take that left leg out to the left. And lay that on the box. So you see, you don't have to have fancy yoga props. Look around your house. See what you can find. If you didn't have a box with something in it, see how a yoga block and a box of tissues are just about the same size. Use a full box because if it's empty, it gets a little soft. Now we stretch into the heel, push the heel on the wall into the wall, and then inhale, take that leg back up. And you could move your block over to the other side. Switch hands, holding, holding your belt with your right hand. And turn and drop that left foot onto the block or the bolster or the chair on the other side. Great. Now the little toe on the wall, you're going to turn that down. Push that heel in. Good. So Sutadara here is very flexible. Um, and his shoulder goes down, so this creates very nice alignment. For a lot of people, that might be too much, so it might be nice to have a little height, a bolster, a pillow, a block. Good. And then you're going to bend that left knee and roll back out. Great. Okay. Now, we're going to go back to traction. Hook the thumbs. Move in a little close to the wall, push the heels in, so the legs feel very stiff and pressing into the floor. And then switch the hooks of the thumbs. Great. 
And now you can see the armpits are wide open and that makes you smile, doesn't it? It makes you feel full of joy. Can't be sad when you have that. And then when the... So now we're going to move in closer to the wall. Here we are. We're going to move in and we're going to make a little box shape with our body like this. Feet and the floor and the wall. And you're going to get 90 degrees in the knees. Good. You could stay like this. This is just delicious, just like this. Or you could take this right foot and put it on the front of the left thigh. And maybe just push that right knee a little bit towards the wall. This left hand can do whatever it likes. Drop it out or place it on your belly. Our fingertips can be very sensitive. When you place your fingertips on your belly, you can, you know, let the fingertips imagine what's below. The breathing, you'll feel the belly rising and falling. You can imagine the organs that you're just hovering over. Let the fingertips be sensitive. Now, if you're very flexible, you could reach through this little gap in your leg and you could hold the back of your thigh or the front of the shin and you could pull that leg a little bit close to you, taking the foot off the wall. That bit's going to be a little harder if you have tight hips. But if you have tight hips, it might be something you should do. Put it into your little box of yoga tricks. We're going to release that, put the foot back on the wall and switch. So you've got this shape and then you're going to take this left foot and place it on the front of your right thigh. And just put your hand, just gently move that left knee towards the wall. And just watch, observe. Where do you feel it? Do you feel it in your hip? Do you feel it in your back? Wherever it is you feel it, breathe towards that. Imagine that the breath is like a beautiful white light moving through your body. Or crystal clear water. Or give the breath something, a picture that suits you. But let the breath touch the place where you feel yoga. Again, you could hold the back of your thigh, or you could reach in there and hold the front of your shin. Try to keep your head on the floor. Try to keep that opposite knee moving towards the wall. And just feel it. Maybe it's a ligament, or a muscle, or a bone. What is it that you feel in the pose? And then release. Great, okay. So now we're going to get closer to that wall. And to get in real close, you want to scooch all the way in so that your hip is touching the wall. And then lay down and bring your legs all the way up. Now a really nice thing to do is to get your legs glued to the wall, just like we did when we were laying on the ground. So take a moment there to scooch in. If there's a big gap, it won't feel as delicious. Now there's a few ways of doing this, legs up the wall pose. You could put your hips on a pillow or a bolster or a block. Or you could just do it like this, especially if your back is hurting. Um, there's been a lot of Netflix and CNN and all of that happening. Uh, so you might have been sitting in a chair or a couch for too long. You want to reverse that. So do the gentler, easier version like this for a while. So we could do that just for a little while. And then you're going to glue your legs to the wall. And exhale, open the legs out wide for Uta Vista, wide-legged pose, Uta Vista Konasana. You don't have to be very wide, just, just when you feel the legs are going to come off the wall, you're going to stop. Again, the fingertips could be somewhere on the body, sensing what's going on, what's below, what's beneath, what's inside. Or you could just drop your hands out and give yourself more freedom. Watch the places that are working. 
but also explore and find other places that are not working, places that can completely relax here. How about that heart? Relax the heart again. Feel what you're feeling. Again, you don't have to go very deep. You'll feel the hamstrings working, the groin working. You want the lower back to spread and smile and release. And all the while, long, slow, deep breaths. So you could do this for many minutes. And then the next one would be to hold the inside of the knees here. And then you're going to pull the knees kind of towards you. And then see if you can get the soles of your feet together. Soles of the feet together for Bodhikinasana. And then you could maybe press the knees towards the wall. Or not. If you're feeling like, okay, I need more of a restorative practice this morning, you could just relax your hands. Try to keep your lower back on the ground. Try to relax that middle part, dropping the belly button down. The softness. The gentleness, the kindness. Bring that kindness to yourself in your practice so that you know it, so that you know it completely. What does it feel like to be kind and loving inside? And then you'll know what it feels like when you offer that to the people in your life. Your family, your friends. Okay, they could stay here for many minutes. The last one would be to go back up to this lovely pose. So I'm going to come out of it, so Dara's going to stay in it. So a really nice thing to do here, if you had a sandbag at home, and you could make a sandbag when the beach is open. The beaches are opening again. Go down and, you know, get uh, maybe an old pair of jeans. Our Anna made us sandbags and um, cut up your jeans and make it like a, a long bag and then you could put the sandbag or a friend could put the sandbag for you on your feet and that's going to anchor the head of the femur down into the back of the pelvis and a little weight there helps so we're pretending that the block is a sandbag and here comes Anna with the sandbag thank you so much Anna made these sandbags out of old jeans look aren't they beautiful and they're just the right weight. Great. So we'll just put that up there just so that you can see. Now this is specifically for back pain. This is going to be a real good thing. And then, you know, you might stay for 10 minutes like that. When we're like this, our blood pressure low. We sleep better from this pose. Depression kind of clears away a little bit. Good. Okay, so I'm going to take that off. Good. Okay, so now you can bend your knees, roll to your right side, and come back. Thank you for the sandbags, Anna. So now we're going to turn, and we're just going to come on our hands and knees like this. We're going to drop our belly, open the elbows, inhale, look up, and exhale, round the back, drop the head, relax the feet. So we'll do two more like that. Inhale, lift, look up, and exhale, release and relax. So one is the cat and one is the cow. So this is the cow, and then this is the cat. You want to open those vertebrae up and release. And then you're going to take that right hip. Now I'm going to be your mirror. So now you're going to take that right hip and move it towards your right shoulder. And just peep over your right shoulder. And squeeze. And release and switch. Left hip towards the left shoulder. Peep over that shoulder. So these are easy side bends. Good. We're going to do two more each side. Right hip towards the right shoulder, peep over. Left hip towards the left shoulder. 
one more each side. Good, back starting to feel better already. I hope so. Now we're going to go ahead and lay down, lay flat. Lay flat on your tummy with your forehead on the floor and take your hands close there by the armpit chest, not in under the body, but a little bit outside. Bring your elbows close to your rib cage, and then you're just gonna inhale, lift your head and your heart. And then the hands have an action, and that action is to kind of imagine that you're dragging the hands back towards the back of the mat, all the while squeezing the elbows in. This is a little baby cobra snake. And then release it very slowly. Release your hands, palms turned up. Turn your head to one side. And then turn your head to the other side. Drop the shoulders, relax and release. And again, placing the hands. Hands back towards the armpit chest, squeezing the elbows in. Stretch back into your toes. Inhale, lift. This time we're coming a little bit higher, maybe onto your belly button. Notice how the hands want to press the floor away. We want those hands to drag back. And maybe look up. Open that heart. Feel what you're feeling. And then let it go. Release. Let it go. Turn the head to one side. Drop the shoulders. Drop the palms. And turn the head to the other side. I'm going to take her hands out. So this is... A few little back bends, really nice, squeezing the tension and then releasing the tension. Squeezing the tension and releasing. And if anything hurts, then you're going to stop doing it, of course. We're going to lift both hands off the floor and stretch into the little finger side of your hand. Just that. And then release. Turn your head to one side. Turn your head to the other side. And then come back to centre. Inhale, lift your hands. This time lift your feet as well. Stretch back into your toes. Stretch up into your fingers. Look up through your hands and smile. And release it. Let it all go. Turn your head to one side. Relax everything. Turn your head to the other side and relax. Good. Now we're going to come up and we're going to come onto our right forearm across the mat. And you're going to pull that left foot down beside your hip. Now some people will just be able to go here and that's fine. Maybe you might be able to turn and bend your toes and lift your elbow. You want to get the front hip down to the floor. You don't have to go very far. Just that and release and switch left forearm right across the mat pull that right heel towards you now try not to get it to touch the buttocks keep it on the outside and then turn your hand around you're going to bend the toes just like little knuckles in your feet elbow pointing up front of the right hip you want to try and get that back down to the ground and release lovely Drop back down, relax and release. So it's really important to squeeze and release, squeeze and release, and find the lovely peace between the poses. And turn your head to the other side. Last one of these. We're going to try and reach back. You can hold your feet, your ankles, your shins. Start out with your forehead on the ground and point your toes towards the ceiling and then follow your toes up. Press your shins towards the wall behind you and look up. Good. Squeeze the shoulder blades together, lift the knees. Look up. And then release and relax it all. Feel as though you were a little pat of butter melting on hot toast. And turn your head to the other side. Great, now we're going to come up and we're going to be on our hands and knees and we're going to come very slowly into downward facing dog. Turn the toes, lift the knees. Good, 
and then very slowly, as though somebody was lifting your hips up and pulling them back, up and back, and then lower your heels down. Good. Let the start of the downward facing dog be very slow and gentle. Let yourself explore where is the block, where is the fibrosis, the wall, where's the pain, where's the pinch, where's the soreness. So explore the pose and then listen to your body. It will naturally try to help you, to lead you into where you should be. We're going to bend that right knee and press the left heel down. And then straighten that right knee, bend the left knee, press the right heel down. Push the floor down and away with the hands. Good. Now, straighten that left knee. Bend both knees and try to get your belly on your thighs. Push the floor down and away. Lengthen the arms. And keeping the shoulders low, see if you can very slowly straighten your knees. And then we're going to come high on the toes. Float down on your knees. Open your knees out wide. Toes touch behind. Sit on the heels and come onto your fingertips. And push the floor down and away to get your sit bones back down onto your heels. Drop your forehead. And then relax one arm and then relax the other arm. Great. Come back up. So, of course, it's so nice when you find yourself moving into certain poses and your mind and body might feel very comfortable in certain poses. So when you're practicing on your own, just stay in those poses until you're done with them. Let's come back now. We're in Adho Mukha, downward facing dog. And from here, lengthen the armpit chest, lengthen the side body, take the hips back. Open the back of the legs. We're going to come forward into a little plank. Now, if your lower back is hurting, plank might not be what you want to do. But you might want to move to the next one, down onto the front of the feet, drop the hips, take the chest through the arms, and squeeze the elbows back towards the rib cage. Look up. Look at one spot, and then soften the eyes. Now, if this is very hard, you can put your knees down. We're going to turn the toes and push back to downward facing dog. We're going to rest again now. Come up high on your toes. Float down on your knees. Open the knees. This is a great resting place. This time, I want you to see what it feels like to open the palms up. Drop the head. Hopefully that back now is starting to feel better. We'll put our hands down, bring the knees together. Off we go again, turn the toes, lift the knees, exhale back to downward facing. Now this time, we're gonna stay on the back of the feet, if you can. We're gonna come forward, just notice plank, we're not staying in plank today. We're just gonna drop the hips down and in there. See if you can bring your chest through your arms, squeeze the elbows back towards the ribs. Now this is much higher. The knees are way up off the ground. You want to drop the hips down, curl around the kidneys behind. And then push back, downward facing. All the way, lengthening out, breathing into those places and those spaces. And then come up high on your toes, down on your knees. We'll open the knees last time. We're going to do this, so really get down and relax. Maybe cross one hand over the other and drop your head onto that. And switch the cross of the hands. And then come back up. 
Now here, we're just going to use downward facing dog to come off the ground. So you're going to stand and walk your hands back towards your feet. Hands to your hips and inhale, come back up. We're going to do forward folding just a little bit. Okay. And then maybe walk to the front of your mat. Okay. So we're going to take both hands up. So this really helps us. This kind of helps me. Teacher I had once said, put the block between your thighs. So let's put a block between our thighs. And squeeze the block. And now try to take the hands up. Go. Squeeze your block. Look up between your hands. Reach the hands up. Squeeze your block. Good. And then release, we'll take that block out of there. But imagine you still have it and take the block this time and squeeze your hands into your block. Drop the lower back, lift the pit of the belly. You could look up at your block, don't drop it on your head. Press the hands into the block. And release. So what we're trying to do, if you look from the side, sometimes our belly gets weak as we get older. We're going to keep this core strong. You're going to keep your hamstrings long and then you're going to be able to work with this lower back. So you want to bring your belly back into the bowl of your pelvis. Bring it all back in. Drop the lower back. Lift the pit of the belly up. So you're shooting from the hip like a cowboy. But don't bend your knees to do it. And then you get better posture and less back pain, right? All right. So now we're going to do our forward fold. So maybe you'll have a block. Maybe you'll have two blocks. Or things that look like blocks in your house. Find them. And here, I want you to stand with your feet maybe a little less than hip distance. Look up at the ceiling. Feel as though you're inviting all the good things to come lovely things the summer has in store. When the doors open and we all come out and greet each other again, there'll be picnics and parties, and all the fun things, all the dancing and laughing and singing. Exhale, come forward and down and we'll place our hands here. We're going to lengthen the back, lift the heart out over the front of the mat, press down into your hands. Stretch the back of the legs. Open the back of the knees. Good. Long, long, long way down. Good. Now this might be all you want to do. Or you might want to turn your blocks down a notch. Once you come down, then repeat all of those movements again. Lift the sternum out over the front of the mat. Press back into the legs. Soften the belly. You can even take a hand up there and feel that little space between that lower belly and your thigh. It should be getting like closed off. They're coming together there. That's a really good sign. That's protecting your back. Now turn your blocks down another notch. Press down to lift up. Press back into the legs. Belly thigh, belly thigh, belly thigh. Laying on the belly. Maybe you'll take the blocks away. Now at any time, if you start to feel sharp pains, you're going to not to go any further. Some people will want to stay up tall like this. Some people will be able to come down a bit because they've been practicing these poses for a while. Maybe you'll be able to line your fingertips and your toe tips up. Gazing still at the floor. Now, Think about your sternum moving towards the floor. Inhale. And then on the exhale, drop your head. Lengthen the back of the legs. Shift the weight very slightly forward. And we want to rebuild our little way out. So you're going to get your blocks if that's what you were using. Start out with the lowest block. Inhale, lift. Keep the legs straight. On the next breath, turn the blocks up a notch. Inhale, lift. Legs straight. And then la 
last one. Inhale, lift. Then hands to the hips and inhale, come back up. Now, this may not be accessible to everyone. Then you could just put your head on a chair, have the chair there in front. Maybe next week we'll do some chair yoga. Uh, so, next one for that lower back, we're going to take a block. And we're going to put the block behind us and step your feet to the outer edges of your mat. And then reach down and hold on here. And pull your mat away from your feet to create tension as you bend your knees forward and then just sit down on your block. Take the hands together. Press the knees apart. Good, this is very nice for stretching that lower back. We could take a few breaths here. And then, you're gonna reach in there, come forward, and turn your block down a notch. Pull your mat away from your feet, bend the knees, and sit down on your block. Hands together there, push the knees apart, gaze ahead. Lovely, oh, your lower back is laughing now saying thanks a million and then reach down pull the mat away lift your bottom how about we turn the block down even more now if it gets too low you can just go back up to the last notch that you were at good yes you could do this against a wall too but if you feel like the back is loosening and stretching enough that you can do it without the wall do that we have one more notch, haven't we? Let's hold on to the mat, pull it away from your feet, take your block out of there, pull the mat away from the feet. Now try to bend your knees towards the front of the mat. Try to keep your heels down and then bounce a little bit. Bounce down in there, keep the arms on the inside, palms together, push your knees away and gaze ahead. Good job. And then to come out of it, hold the mat, pull it away from your feet, come back up, stand the feet together. And here we're just going to hold on to the elbows and just hang. Just hang and breathe. And then drop the hands to the floor, bend the knees really, really deep and start to roll back up. One vertebrae at a time. Let your head be the very last thing to come up. Lifting the chin, settling the head on the spine. Great. So triangle pose is really good for lower back, so we have to throw it into this class. But I want you to use a block, so you don't have to put your heel against the wall. We'll just, let me st start that right. So right foot in front, left foot behind and take your block up over your head and then on the exhale so you were giving your block to somebody way out over there it's like here have my block take my block reach out keep the front knee straight left hand on your left hip and then place that block there beside your right ankle you're going to push down into the block open the shoulders up and then see what it feels like to take your hand up. So you want to keep bringing this bottom hip in, the top shoulder back. Good. Let me just come and look at Sukhdara. Yes, lovely. And then take the top hand up into the sky. Good. And then you're going to hold on to your block. up, switch hands, give your block to the other hand and switch feet. Left foot in front, right foot behind. So the right hand can be on the right hip. And you're going to see if your friend wants the block. Exhale, reach out of the room, give them that block. <laughs> and then place it behind your left ankle. Nice wide stance here. And when you look down, that front heel is in line with the instep of the back foot. That's usually a nice alignment. Push down, turn the shoulders. You can take a few breaths to come into the pose. 
And then finally, you're going to lift that right hand up into the sky. Let your eyes settle on one spot. Just one spot. And those soft, kind, gentle eyes. Good. Bottom hip forward, top shoulder back. Feel as though you're opening everything in the front body. Legs mean everything in the back body. And pushing down into the back heel, you can inhale, come back up. And you can leave the block there if you want. That's okay. Good, so standing Tadasana. Now let's see how we feel, just standing. Steady standing. Pull your knees up. Press the top of the thighs back. Lift that pit of your belly. Lift the sternum. Lift the armpit chest. Have the chin just level with the earth. Feel again as though the crown of the head was just being lifted up. I like to think of those toys. You know that grabby thing that you put a few coins in and you can try and grab a toy. I like to think that I'm being grabbed up into something wonderful in the sky. Good, and release. Okay, so that's just the one standing pose we're going to do. But I want you just to come to the wall now and see if you can find that same posture. Imagine you've got the block between your thighs, you're dropping that lower back, you're going to lift your hands all the way up and just feel how straight and long your back can feel. And then take your hands down and take a little baby step away from the wall. So when you look at a crowd of people, you can always pick the yogis out. They usually have that really good posture. They look like they're standing in Tadasana. They don't mind standing in lines because it's, a, it's a, a chance to practice Tadasana. It's a very important pose. Any chance you get, practice standing, steady standing. So we're going to come now and we're going to sit down. Is it okay if I borrow a blanket, please? From your pal. Thank you very much. So we're going to come like this. And we're going to make a little bolster. You could just grab a blanket off your bed, but keep it folded nice and neat. And make a little bolster like this. You could also use a block. <coughs> Okay, so um, I'm going to be your mirror again, so what I say will be the opposite. Uh, what I'm doing will be the opposite. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to swing both feet over to our right. Now this top foot, the toes are pointing back. And the bottom foot, the toes can be pointing out to the side or back. Now, see the way I'm leaning way off here? I'm going to take that and I'm going to make a little bolster there. Good, sitting up nice and tall. Great, now with this left hand I'm going to swing it around and I'm going to see if I can catch the top right arm. And then on the exhale I'm going to swing across and see if I can grab the opposite left leg and inhale lift and exhale twist. Now my left hand is pressing into my right kidney area, which is what I wanted it to do. That's going to encourage me to stay tall, lifting, twisting. And release. Good. And switch. We take our wee bolster, and straighten the legs, and then swing both legs over to the other side. So again, Something just like a little pillow like this can give us such good alignment. Everything comes nice and straight. So you have that left foot on top of the right. The toes of the right can be pointing out. Some people point them back. Sit up nice and tall. Good. Now find this right hand. And swing it around, you're going to hold that left upper arm. See here where my fingers are? And then I'm going to try and take this left hand and swing it across to hold the opposite right thigh. Inhale, lift. Exhale, twist. Inhale, lift. Exhale, twist. Good. Feel the vertebrae moving around. Feel the shoulders. Maybe the chin, maybe the eyes. Now if you have neck stiffness, 
you could keep your chin in line with your sternum. And then release. And of course, if you're loving it, you could stay a little longer in the poses. Good. So twists are really nice for that lower back pain. Here we are again, Dandasana. Remember, we started out like this. Every now and then, you could throw this in to your lower back practice and see how does the posture feel? Does it feel like tired or are you starting to feel strong? We're going to bend that right knee. We're going to keep a wee bit of space between the right foot and the left leg. And take your right elbow on the inside, left hand comes all the way around behind your back. Now some people have shorter arms, they might need a block. Or you could find the floor. You're just going to lift and twist, look over your left shoulder. Lift and twist and turn. So now this right elbow is pressing into the knee and the knee is pressing into the elbow. So there's a little fight going on there, but a good fight. And then release. And of course, remember, you, in your own practice, will stay as long as you feel comfortable. We bend this left knee, we're going to keep that little space. Left elbow on the inside, right hand behind, lift and twist and turn. Now remember when we were standing on the wall with that right, with our feet? Stand out into the air, stretch out, keep that right leg intelligent. As you turn and twist, find one spot to gaze at. And if you have that neck problem, maybe you could just gaze straight out, keeping your chin in line with your strength. Mm, release. Okay, so that's what we kind of think of as an open twist. Now this would be a closed twist, but these are very easy beginner type twists. Now I'm going to bend that right knee. Now it's the opposite elbow, your left elbow. To get into this, you want to take that right hand behind and take the left elbow across the knee. Now, if that's very difficult to do, you can just cuddle the knee and pull it towards the middle of the mat. Otherwise, elbow to the outside, belly comes over to the thigh, palm could be open. Inhale, lift and exhale, twist. Now, what's happening with that front foot? Stretch out into it, make every part of you important to the pose. And then release. Good, happy backs today. We're bending that left knee. Left hand comes behind. So another good way of coming into this is to reach up out of your body. Make space and take that elbow across to the other side. Hook the elbow on the outside. Bring your belly over your thigh. Stay tall. Inhale, lift. Exhale, twist. Big deep breath. Good. Now, when you're in a twist, you might notice one lung isn't taking as big a deep a breath as the other lung. And that's because it's been squeezed. But notice the work that you do as you come out of the twist. Start to release as you come out, a kind of a, a suction or a, a vacuum occurs and pulls in a deeper breath into that lung. And we're back in Dandasana. Okay, so we have one more twist. It's a really good twist. It's a little complicated to get into it, but it's worth the effort. Have your little bolster. So what we want to do is we want to get this right foot beside the right hip. That might not happen so easy. So you'll have to sit up tall. So this might help. If, if this doesn't help, you still feel like, oh, it's too hard, then you're going to sit up maybe on two blocks or we can do a different twist or just go back to the twists that we did. So this is what I'd like you to do. Right foot is like this, Virasana foot. Left foot is in Baddha half a butterfly. And then we're going to stay tall. And on the exhale, inhale completely. And on your exhale, you're going to spin out over the bent leg. And you're going to come onto your fingertips. 
Now watch what I'll do with my hips. I'm going to lift them and I'm moving them towards the right foot, but don't move the right knee. Let me do that again because that's really important. <coughs> Inhale, lift. On the exhale, spin out. The hips will move towards the right foot. <coughs> and then you're going to walk around, walk around, walk with the fingertips. Keep walking around. Don't move the front knee. Walk around, walk around, walk around until you're able to line your eyes up with that right foot. So you're turning your shoulders towards the back of the mat. Stay on your fingertips. Keep your elbows bent. And see if you can look underneath that left armpit. Take a couple of breaths. And then slowly start to release. Now these are pretty deep. The longer you're in, the slower you come out. Go all the way out. Straighten out your legs. Good. So when we're in like that, we're like squeezing like a dishcloth out of the sink. Squeezing all our abdominal organs and getting that lower back to move in such a great way. Okay, let's take that left foot beside the hip, outer hip. Look down, the foot's outside. Don't sit on the foot. Right foot to the inside of that thigh. Tall. Good. So I'm doing the opposite to you. Remember, on the exhale, that's when we move. We set it up on the inhale. We move on the exhale. Good. Fingertips to the floor. Now the hips are going to move to that left foot. Did you see that? That's a, that's a kind of a trick to get into the pose deeper. Walk the hands around. Walk the hands around. Turn your shoulders towards the back of the mat. Squeeze the belly. Look under your right arm. See if you can see that right left foot. And breathe. And smile. Good, and again, you could stay a little longer if you're enjoying it. But we just have a little class and so we have to come back out. And remember, it's a pretty deep twist. So we want to move into it slowly and carefully and move out of it slowly and carefully. Good. We're back home. Good. So now we're just going to lay down flat. Lay all the way down flat. Make sure there's room around you if you're Go to be in Shavasana very soon. We're going to lay down. We're going to take our knees into our chest and drop your head back. Press with your hands down onto your shins. Flex your feet. Press with your hands. Good. Just like that. And release. Okay, so... Um, no little back bend series would be done without a set you banda. So you can do your set you banda pose with the block. Um, if you're learning the pose especially. So we've been doing this. Come up on your tippy toes, lift your hips and slide your block in under your hips. Then you take your hands and clasp around the other side of the block. Bring your shoulder blades together and then rest your hips. Good. Now, if you wanted to check and see, stay on your block if you're on the block. If you wanted to see how your back was doing after all those poses, maybe you don't want to use a block. And just come up on your tippy toes, lift your hips, bring your heels down, clasp your hands just in under your body, and try to set your band up without a support. Don't let the knees fall apart, stretch towards the front of your knees, and just lift your hips. Back of the neck long. Don't turn your head when you're in this pose. Then release your hands. Slowly come back down. We're going to take the soles of the feet together. Release your shoulder blades. And take your arms just over your head. Palms turned up. Relax your elbows. And then take your arms down by your side knees together and from here this would be a lovely place to move into shavasana but don't just lay flat and relax move consciously into that relaxation 
Relax both hands, both arms, both shoulders. Feel as though that feeling of relaxation was moving through your body like a seeker, seeking out where you're still holding on, where you're tense and sore and weary and lonely. And then when you're ready to move on, straighten maybe one leg and just drop it to the side. And then straighten out the other leg and just release it, and relax it and let it go. And just like all of the hard poses stay in your Shavasana, all of the hard poses, they're where we're holding and twisting or stretching. Bring that same element to this Shavasana. Drop the body. Consciously drop the body. Feel what it's like to relax all of the muscles in your body. And then don't move away from that until you're sure all of the muscles in my body feel relaxed. And then relax all of the nerves in your body. All the little nerves trying to bring messages to each other. Let them relax now. There's nothing to do. There's nowhere to go. The work is done. Relax all the nerves in your body. And then the bones, how are the bones? Relax the bones in your body. The outer bone, the inner bone, where all the tiny little red blood cells are being made right now. Relax in there. Tiny little baby cells, let them be born into a relaxed body. And all the organs, your heart, relax your heart again. Feel what's in there. Feel all of the confusion and the anxiety and the loneliness of separation now. Feel it, feel it all. Be real. But then start to let it go. Relax your liver kidneys, your stomach and all your intestines, all those knots of emotion deep down inside of us. Let them go now, relax. Let just that lovely breath flow, that seeker, seeking. Where can it help you? Where can it heal you? Bring it to your brain, feel as though it was like a little invisible hand turning off all the switches in there and that computer for brain. And let the brain rest. As though the brain was like a muscle now. Just rest. Rest inside you. And then that restfulness, that peacefulness moving into the face. Rest the forehead and smooth out all of the Little wrinkles between the eyebrows, down into the temples. Relaxing the lower jaw and the lips and the tongue. Feel as though a lovely feeling of serenity was just naturally showing up on your face. As though you could see your own face now. Completely relaxed, completely at peace. Deep down knowing that everything is going to be all right. We're all going to get through this. We're going to be fine. So of course, Shavasana is a pose that we could stay for a long, long time. And it's so good and it's so restful and it's so nice to just stay in Shavasana. With complete comfort. 
It's a chance that we can lay completely comfortable inside our own skin, being ourselves. But now it's time to come back out. So let's start to move the fingers and the toes. And bending your knees, roll to your right side and pause there. Give yourself enough time to take one last long, deep, loving breath. And on the exhale, truly relax. Leave all your worries right here. And then come back up into a comfortable cross-legged sitting place. Taking the hands together in front of your heart. Sit tall, sit light, sit bright. We close our class with the sound of OM three times. Inhale. Start now. Start where you are. Start with fear. Start with pain. Start with doubt. Start with hands shaking. Start with voice trembling. But start. Start and don't stop. Start where you are with what you have. Just start. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for doing your yoga. Hope your back is feeling better. Namaste.